Hello, I am Vanya Gröger, also known as Nechtan. And in this video, I will talk about how to prepare for a live show as a drummer. Also, I will talk about a lot of little things and details that you have to pay attention to when you set up your kit on stage. Enjoy! First of all, it's very, very important to know the songs very well that you want to play live. When you can play a song in the rehearsal room, it doesn't mean that you will be able to play the song as well when you are in a live situation. So the best thing is when you know the songs like 120% in order to give 100% at a live show. In the past, I sometimes made the mistake that I was only practicing blast beats and double bass all day and played the songs with my band only during the rehearsals. And because of that, I was uh, very nervous when I entered the stage and sometimes just forgot the next part of the song or something like this. And to avoid this, it is very useful to play the songs for yourself. And it is best when you know the songs so well that you can play them without hearing any guitar or singer or any other member of your band. This is also very useful in the worst case scenario when the monitoring on stage sucks or doesn't work. A very simple trick that can help you to adopt to the conditions that you have on a stage is to just switch off the light during band rehearsals and only leave a little light source you can actually see things but it's important that the room is really dark. When you can play the songs then, very good, you will be very well prepared for the stage. First of all, it is important to know what you have to bring to a gig. This is especially important for beginners who haven't played a show yet. When you play on a festival, your band usually gets a tech rider where it says exactly what kind of drum set is on stage, how many toms it has, and so on. When you play a smaller show with just one or two other bands, it might be very useful to make contact with the other drummers, so you make sure that someone brings his drum kit. Also check out how the other drum kit, if you don't bring your own, looks like, so you can prepare to play on it. When you bring your own drum kit to a show, it's probably the most simple way for you. You just set up your own kit and everything is fine. When you play on the drum set of another person, you will still have to bring some of your own stuff. The absolute minimum of things you have to bring to a gig is your own snare, your own foot pedals and your own cymbals. Sometimes you will also have to bring your own hi-hat machine, your drum seat, your snare stand and if you use a bass drum trigger, of course, your trigger and drum module. And don't forget your sticks. I also recommend to bring one or two cymbal stands with you. One more point that might be very important is if you play two bass drums. When you have two bass drums and two single pedals, you will have to make very, very sure that there is a second bass drum on stage. I think I had the situation like two or three times that I brought my own kit to a gig with only one bass drum and suddenly there was a drummer from one of the other bands who had just brought two single pedals. So if you are lucky, someone else will let you play on his double pedal, but since double pedals are very expensive, most drummers really don't like other people to play on their equipment. Also, you might have a problem to adopt to a completely different pedal settings that you are not familiar with. So make sure that you have a convertible pedal that you can convert to a double pedal or make sure that there are two bass drums. When you practice for yourself, you usually have your favorite tom setup. For example, I like to have my four toms like this. But when you play live, you will often have to play on drum sets that belong to others and that may have completely different tom setups. 
I will now explain the most common tom setups that you might encounter when you play live. This is the most common setup when you have a normal drum kit with one bass drum. You have the snare of course in the middle as always and two toms that are mounted on the bass drum and one stand tom. Add a little tom slightly left to the snare then you have my personal favorite setup. Sometimes there's also a second floor tom. Sometimes you also have a setup where there's no tom in this place and the right symbol is higher up here. This is a very common setup when people have two bass drums. Then they often have the snare in the middle, two toms slightly left and right from the snare and one or two floor toms. I personally do not like this setting very much but you will have to prepare to play with this kind of setting. Then you have the kind of almost jazz-like setup with only two toms. One tom up here, often also in the middle, and one or two floor toms. For me personally this is the worst case scenario because I like to have some more toms. So what do you do when you encounter a completely different setup on stage? You can mentally prepare for such a case when you leave out for example this tom or this tom during a band rehearsal. This way you learn to adopt your fill-ins to a different setup. What I also like to do is that I take my smallest tom with me. It doesn't take much space and I can easily mount it on any cymbal stand. When you play live on a different drum set it might not only have a different tom setup but also a completely different tom tuning. I had often the case that I had to play on drum sets where the toms were tuned very very low and it was very hard for me to adopt to that because it's just easier for me to play fast stuff when I have at least some rebound. So if you want to prepare for this just tune your own toms a bit lower than usual and you will get used to it. Some more things you can do to prepare yourself for example just change the positions of your toms a little bit. Make them for example a little bit higher than usual or a bit lower if possible or a bit farther away or whatever. When you can play on all these little variations then you are very well prepared. So now you are at the location where your gig is and you have one hour until you have to enter the stage. Now I recommend that you start to set up everything that you can set up without being on stage. Make sure that your drum seat is set up and adjusted at the right height. Also set up your hi-hat machine and the hi-hat cymbals and if you have your stick bag. Put together snare and snare stand. Have your double pedal ready. And if you use a trigger, don't forget to have your trigger and drum module ready. This is all important because it will save you a lot of time when you actually enter the stage and set up your drum kit. Especially when you play on a festival, there's often only a very short time to change over between the bands. Sometimes there are only 15 minutes between bands and when the band that plays before you plays maybe like one or two minutes longer and the drummer needs some time to get off the stage, you may have only 10 or even 5 minutes to set up your own stuff. So time is a critical factor here. You have to be mentally prepared to set up everything as fast as possible. If you are insecure in this, you can also practice this at home and just set up your stuff as fast as possible before a band rehearsal for example. When you play fast stuff, it may also be important to warm up a little bit before the show. If you want to know more about this, you can check out my video about how to warm up before a show here. So now you have carried everything on stage and set up everything as fast as possible. Now you sit down and it's time for a final checkup. Make sure that you can reach your cymbals comfortably, that you can play all the toms and they are not at a weird angle or something. And also make sure that all the screws that are important are tightened. Sometimes I had the problem that during the show 
suddenly a symbol would just go down like this. To prevent this, make sure everything is tightened. Also, when you play on a drum riser, make sure that if you have a cymbal stand, for example like this, that it doesn't easily fall off. One thing that bothered me a lot when I played my first live shows was that sometimes everything was perfect, but the bass drum felt completely weird. When you have this problem, here are some things you can do. First of all, if the bass drum sounds weird, and sounds more like a big floor tom, for example, and has a weird rebound, it might have not enough dampening material inside. So just take anything you can grab, for example, a hoodie or something, and stuff it into the bass drum. It will help a lot. If the bass drum sounds okay, but it still feels weird, this can also have another reason. And this is the distance between the floor and the bass drum hoop here in the front. Some people have set up the bass drum pretty high and some have the bass drum hoop down on the floor. And this influences the distance between your beater and the bass drum head. I personally have set up my bass drum in a way that I can just squeeze my hand under it. So when I play live, I always check the distance and check if my hand fits under it. And if it doesn't, I can adjust the distance between floor and bass drum here. If your bass drum still feels weird, the problem may be a different tension on the bass drum head. If you are used to playing on a bass drum with a high drum head tension, it might be very difficult for you to play on a bass drum with low drum head tension. So in this case, you will have to tighten the drum head a little bit. If you change the tension of the drum head, it is important to memorize how many turns you turned which screw, because this way you can easily turn it back when you are done. So that's it for today. I hope this video helps to make your live performance better and more enjoyable. If there are any questions left, feel free to leave a comment. And if you found this video helpful, also like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. And if you want to support me, you can also buy, for example, this t-shirt from my shop. If you want to see some of my live performances, you can check out this playlist. See you next time.